I'm Drew Stevenson. This is a video for my professional responsibility class or for those who are preparing for the MPRE. Here we're going to be talking about Model Rule 1.8i, which is about the conflicts of interest that arise when lawyers acquire a proprietary interest or some sort of ownership stake in the litigation or property that is the subject of the litigation. The text of 1.8i begins, a lawyer shall not acquire a proprietary interest in the cause of action or subject matter of litigation the lawyer is conducting for a client, except, and we're going to have two big exceptions, that the lawyer may first acquire a lien authorized by law to secure the lawyer's fee or expenses, and two, he may contract with a client for a reasonable contingent fee in a civil case. So that's our basic rule, and let's unpack this a little bit. First, this originates actually at common law long before we had the model rules or even the ABA existed. Like Rule 1.8e, the general rule here has its basis in a common law doctrine called champerty and maintenance and is designed to avoid giving the lawyer too great an interest in the litigation. The other issue that can come up here is when the lawyer acquires an ownership interest in the subject of the representation, it will be more difficult for a client to fire or discharge the lawyer if the client so desires, because they can't get rid of you now, you're essentially party to the case, a co-plaintiff or a co-defendant. And again, this could be because maybe the, the client has paid you in property, but the property is itself the subject of the litigation, or it could be that you somehow had the client assign you some of their rights in the litigation. Now, remember, we have these exceptions, and the first is for liens, and they do ask about liens on the MPRE. The basic thing you need to know is that the details of how liens work, the procedure, varies from state to state. But uh, the model rules say that they are permissible as long as you follow state law. This comes up one or two other times in the model rules. So comment 19 to, uh, mo to model rule 1.8 says, the law of each jurisdiction determines which liens are authorized by law. There's liens granted by statute. So like mechanics liens are very common. Uh, plumber's liens, and some expressly authorize lawyer's liens. There's liens that are really are judge-made doctrine or common law, and then there's liens that are acquired basically by contract or private law with the client. So you ask the client to assign some of their litigation rights. Now, keep in mind that in the whole industry of litigation finance, where a client may go to a third-party lender who's going to front them some, some percentage of the money that they expect to win in the lawsuit, the client will typically have to assign the, their rights or most of their rights in the whatever they win from the lawsuit to the lender. Why are they allowed to do that? Because they're not the lawyer providing representation to the client. Now, what about liens for unpaid fees? When a lawyer acquires by contract a security interest in some sort of property, other than the property recovered through the lawyer's efforts in litigation, keep in mind that this is going to also be a business or financial transaction with the client. So you're getting a lien, but because you're doing that to secure your legal fees, you now are doing a business transaction with the client, and thus it will be governed by the requirements of 1.8. A. That, if just to remind you, 1.8A requires that for any type of business transactions with the client, you prepare different types of documents with disclosures and consent and so forth for the client. Here's a quick review question to see if you've been paying attention. Would it be proper under the model rules for a lawyer to acquire a lien following the procedures authorized by state law to secure the lawyer's fees? or expenses? Yes or no? Now, hopefully you know the answer to that if you've been listening for the last few minutes. If not, you might have not been paying attention and should probably re-watch this video. 
That concludes our discussion of 1.8i. In our next lecture, we'll move on to 1.8j.